I started late. Unbelievable. That's six, baby. Ah, let's go. Best wide receiver in the country. Oh, my God. God damn, we can't get past his offensive line. Fuckers are good. Come on, boys, let's go. Get the stop. He made the play. That's unbelievable that he made the play. That's unbelievable. These fucking refs are missing shit left and right. Are you kidding me? God, these refs are trash. End of the first quarter. No, 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 he was short. He was way short. Unbelievable. Just stupid mistakes. Game over. I don't need to fucking watch the rest of this stupid fucking game. Fuck! All right, well, we're here the next day, um, day after the Oklahoma game. Uh, the playoff semifinals games in general. Um, I tried to get through the whole game, and it was very difficult. I did get through the whole game after what you just saw. Um, I cut it off at right before halftime. It was just embarrassing to be an Oklahoma Sooner fan at that point. It was very embarrassing in the sense that there was probably other better teams who should have gone in. It's embarrassing in the sense that we did not look prepared. It was embarrassing in the sense that they were the better team on offense and defense. They were better coached on offense and defense. Um, they had the better players. They had the better cleats. It was very obvious they had the better cleats. Um, we had Jordan. They had Nikes, I'm pretty sure. Um, big difference. There is a big difference. Don't, don't at me on that. Um, also, just, I mean, just... I'm also a big proponent in momentums. Even I mean, I think at one point it was twenty-one to seven LSU, and um, there was that no call pass interference, which is very blatant, not called by an old referee. You guys know how I feel about old referees. You guys know how I feel about referees in general. Um, if you tune into the Sports Plus Live podcast, you'll know. How strongly I disagree against his old ass referees. You, refereeing this young, fast game. I strongly disagree. And there was a rest, it was a walrus referee. This guy was out of shape. I had no idea. No, I had, didn't, I didn't have that laser vision that young referees should have. Don't get me wrong, it was not going to define the game. LSU was way better in every aspect of the game. But what if? What if that was called? What kind of momentum could have, could have Oklahoma had going after that? You never know. They had an ACC crew in there. An ACC crew against a, a Big 12 team, 
against SEC team. Big 12 versus SEC. I think the level of football is way better in the Big 12 and the SEC than it is in the ACC. And I think that, that, that should be taken in consideration. But obviously, how shit the NCAA is, we're not going to see that. And yesterday was a big reason on why you should pay these kids. These guys go out there and put it on the line for their schools. All right? Because this is what happens. When someone like Oklahoma gets put in and they get fucking embarrassed the way they did, not only does that affect them, it affects coaching coming up, it affects commitments coming up, it'll affect sponsorships. There's a big deal with what happened yesterday. It's a big, it's going to be a big deal. You lose commitments over shit like that. If someone's commit, if someone's verbally committed to Oklahoma, but they also have offers on the table from LSU, which one are you going to choose after yesterday? It's very obvious which one you should choose, and that's LSU. No Jalen Hurts next year. Probably no CeeDee Lamb. No Kenneth Murray. Both sides of the ball, you're losing so much talent. Especially after what happened yesterday, you're going to need more talent. There's so many pieces you need to move forward. And it was just an overall embarrassing situation. It's still embarrassing 24 hours later. Um, it hurts more than anything. I said it on my podcast. Go tune in, Sports Plus Life podcast. You can find it on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. I'll link it down below. I didn't think that deep down in my heart, I didn't think Oklahoma deserved to be in this game. I was just happy for them to get there. I was just happy for them to get to where get to that spot. And I would have been okay with losing a closer game, but not that man. That was bad. Um, that was just bad, and it, it, it's gonna sting for a while. I mean, holy shit! I was watching boxing last night. A very meaning, almost a, a meaningless like card on Showtime, and I think it was brought up about at least three to four times. It just hurts when it's brought up that much. Plus, the fight was in Atlanta, um, so it didn't make any better, any anything better, because that's where the game was was in Atlanta. Um, but that's life, man. And um, you need to brush yourself off, keep going, um, and these kids will be okay. Um, a lot of them are going to find out, um, are going to find themselves in the NFL, great NFL careers. CD Lamb, as I'm recording this, um, it just came through that he is entering the draft. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, he'll definitely go top 10. No question about it. Uh, maybe even a little higher. As I stated, Joe Burrow is the number one, person, number one player in the country. He's a Heisman, so he definitely is the number one player in the country. And he showed why he's the number one player in the country by breaking so many records in the first half. I just took my glasses off and they didn't realize it. I mean, he definitely was the number one player in the country. Um... And it, it, he definitely showed it. He was so, so much smarter. He was more athletic. Um, he was ready for everything. He saw the field very well. And he'll definitely go number one next year to the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, they're going to play Clemson. Uh, Clemson who beat Ohio State in um, in the second semifinals game. Which is a really good game. Another game that was marred by shit refereeing. The refereeing was was not that good. They missed two big calls. The targeting, I didn't like the targeting call. Um, I don't remember who it was against. I was still fuming. I wasn't really, I wasn't, I didn't care. I didn't know who was playing. I didn't care. Um, targeting against Trevor Lawrence. Like Trevor Lawrence is 6'6". Lawrence is six, six. He dropped his head down. I mean, he was ducking, squatting down to probably about six foot, maybe six, under six foot. So he made himself smaller. When you're taught to make a tackle, head down across the ball, wrap someone up. That's what he did. He put his head down. Trevor Lawrence's head was down. All of a sudden, that's a targeting call. I did not like that. That call is very subjective depending on who you talk to. The fact that he got ejected for that, I didn't like it either. I get the call, but I, I mean, some people are going to be very subjective, and these referees definitely were subjective, and decided that he needed to be kicked out. By the letter of the law, don't get me started on the letter of the law rule, um, yeah, and the way they have it set up is now they have to get ejected. I think it's been in, in uh, implemented since last year. The second big one they got was they 
the catch and fumble by Clemson, and the fumble was returned for a touchdown. Um, that one was overturned, and that, that I, I didn't like that at all. By rule, I, I got to look up the rule. I don't know if it's changed, but if it's always been, you get the ball, you have possession of the ball, you take two steps, that's a catch. He took three, maybe four steps. Fumbled the ball, got returned for a touchdown, but got overturned, overruled by the referees and the replay committee. I've said this before, I'll say this again. We got to do better for our kids. We got to do better for our kids. We got to have better refereeing. I don't, there's so many different interpretations of what a fuck a catch is anymore that it's, it's just becoming a problem. It's becoming an issue. And I, th I seriously think that by having sharper referees will change a whole lot. Will make this game better. The referees that in anywhere in the NFL and the college are just older guys who've been around a long time, who know the rule book by heart and know this and that. There has to be programs in set in by people who are leaving college, failed NFL players who want to still be part of the game. There has to be something in in for them, and for them to be part of the game right away. There, which is, I, I I just don't like. That the referees are the reason why a lot of these guys aren't playing. Don't get me wrong. Ohio State had plenty of times to win that game. But like I said earlier, I'm a momentum guy. There should have been. There should have, could have, would have. There would have been a different momentum. If that a fumble was, was ruled a fumble. And not an incomplete pass. I actually got it. I mean, I just don't. Where I saw something. Where amateurism, the reason why, and I haven't watched it yet, I watched a little bit, I think it was through Vice. Um, amateur vis amateurism will be like a forgotten thing. And it should be, I think. Because you're not paying, people, we're, we're uh, what have you done for me society? I mean, the kid from Memphis, college basketball player from Memphis, out of the, out of the college, can't play college ball. So now he's getting, he's going to go ahead and, Prepare for the NFL draft, NBA draft. I mean, the kid just wants to play basketball, and you and you won't let him play, taking money to get his family uprooted and moved to a state so they can be closer to the family. And you and that's a a straight violation of the code of the rule book of being an NCAA athlete. Can't make money. Can't do anything. This is a full time job. Being an NCAA athlete is a full time job. Kids, like for example, the guys last night. Um, let's say, for example, it's week five. You know, it's sad. it's a Thursday night game. Some of these guys are Friday night game or Saturday night game. Game's over at 11, 10 o'clock. They have to take the flight back home, get home at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And then have to study because they have an exam the next day. It's a full-time job. We got to treat these kids better. We got to do better for these kids overall. That just made me realize yesterday, watching the referees fuck it up, these old referees. Um, just fuck it up for a bunch of kids. Not saying that it was, the, it was completely their fault. They have a hand in it, though. Um, but yeah, it was an exciting game. I'm looking forward to the finals. I'm interested to see what Trevor Lawrence, Sunshine Trevor Lawrence, is going to do against Joe Burrow. Um, um, it's, it's, we'll see who's, gonna, who's the better coach. Dabble, whack-ass whack Sweeney. Uh, or um, Coach Oregon. I'm going for LSU. Um, I picked Ohio State to win that game, to be in there for the, in the finals against LSU. Did not happen. Um, but if you guys saw the game, you can see why. Because Justin Fields was playing his ass off. Um, Clemson defense was just pretty was pretty vicious. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff going on. I'm excited. I'm gonna end this video. Um, before I start going on another rant, these stupid referees, stupid NCAA, um, just help your boy. 2020, no more dark circles, no more tiredness, no more Rampage Jackson fatness. Help me out. I'm Edgar, Mr. AKA Rodriguez, and I will catch you in the podcast. If not, I'll catch you on YouTube. Let's.